this session today. Spectrum, a junior college association for teachers and students, have always hosted events and activities that contribute to the all-round development of the students. We believe it is equally important to develop the head, heart, and the hand. Today in this pandemic times, when there is an enormous change in the teaching and learning process, Spectrum strives to stay connected with the students. When these students are locked in their houses, the sparkle of the fire, the sound of the florence of the water, its might in the dam, the rising of the sun in the east, sunset in the west, the rhythmic moment of the moon, the rainbow, its various aspects of its spectrum, all needs to be brought to the students with the concepts of physics. Mm. Today, our physics department, along with spectrum, mm. brings this insight into developing physics through experiments in this virtual session. Mm. It is rightly said that education is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. The lady who has dedicated herself to this cause of education mm. is our own principal ma'am, Dr. Hemlata Bagla. Mm. I'll request my colleague, Mr. Kamal Kushlani, to formally introduce our dear principal ma'am. Over to you, Kamal. Thank you very much, Yasmin ma'am. Thank you. Uh, yes, a very good afternoon to principal ma'am sir and all my dear friends who are out over here a just brief introduction about our principal dr hemlata bagla principal kc college and vice chancellor of hyderabad sindh national collegiate university ma'am has an academic uh, experience of 29 years and out of which 13 years, she's been an administrator and head of departments of chemistry, nuclear and radiochemistry. Her research interests lie in different thrust areas of chemical and biomedical sciences. She has obtained her master's in organic chemistry at a very young age of 20. And she's been a top student in the Mumbai University. She has obtained her doctorate in inorganic chemistry, specializing in radiochemistry, again at a very young age of 25 years. She has published more than 170 research papers in national and international journals of repute, including nine publications in NASA's astrophysical database. Her current research her current research uh, interest and areas, those are, she has been recently selected as a member of top 15 scientists worldwide. Top 15, that's remarkable. By International Atomic Energy Agency on Coordinated Research Project in Vienna. The topic is broadly based on radiation effects on polymer materials commonly used in medical devices. Her latest research article was in the field of heavy metal remediation, published in the Journal of Nuclear Engineering and Technology by Elsevier. A recent publication in NASA Astrophysics Data System was on soil augmentation by UMAS. This work was also presented in European Geosciences Union General Assembly in April 21. She recently published a chapter on dry cow dung powder, novel unearthed humus, sustains water food energy nexus in the international book, Humic Substances, edited by Professor Markin. She is actively guiding her research students in the field of applied nuclear and radiochemistry, bioabsorption, solid state nuclear track detectors, industrial environmental chemistry, and green chemistry. In spite of all her busy schedule out uh, with the academic things, she's devoting a great amount of time in research and guiding many PhD students. Ma'am has added many feathers to her cap. Most recently, she's been awarded with 
the 50 most influential principles of India. 50 most influ influential principles of India. Then she's nominate nomination as a winner of Higher Education Forum Leadership and Innovation Award, Best Women Achiever Award at Conclave of Par Women Fiesta, Dr. Sarojini Devi Memorial Award in Chemistry, Indo-US Foundation Award, KC Ratna, Young Associate Award, Young Scientist Award, Dr. Tarun Datta Scientist Memorial Award, and the list goes on. The list is, you know, continuously going on. Now, I would request our principal ma'am, Dr. Hemlata Bagla, madam, kindly address the gathering ma'am. If you could address the gathering ma'am. First of all, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kamal, for that elaborate uh, introduction. I'm humbled. My pleasure. Uh, a warm welcome to all the distinguished uh, leaders of KC College uh, on the digital platform. But let me tell you all, all the students who are present here that we have with us today, a uh, very, very eminent and uh, uh, renowned, uh, or should I say guest or speaker, or a mentor, or an author, Padma Shri, Professor H.C. Verma. Mr. Verma ji, a warm welcome to you. Uh, it you. is indeed a great pleasure that uh, you are here with us and you accepted to be with us this <laughs> afternoon. Thank you. Uh, I apologize that a couple of minutes I was uh, into one of the performances of our students and they would have felt uh, uh, very bad that I leave the performance and <laughs> leave the auditorium. So I thought, let them complete the performance and let me join you. So uh, yeah. wonderful that you are here and you have to wait. I'm sorry for that. But a, a warm welcome to the platform of KC College, HSNC University, Mumbai. We also have our, with us our colleagues and uh, above all, uh, our dear students of not only KC College, but across Mumbai, all the teachers who are part of this uh, afternoon, a warm welcome to all of you. Uh, dear friends, uh, one of uh, the greatest scientists of humanity, if you've heard name of Emerson, uh, he related our life with the value of experiments. And he said, all life is an experiment and the more experiments you make, you uh, make the world better. So indeed, uh, while we pause uh, and reflect the whole trajectory of our progress, I believe that it begins with an experiment and it has to, had to arrive at a proper destination only via experiment. So our whole life is the product uh, of many experiments and we have been conducting since we became very conscious of our senses. So today we are going to be a part of very simple yet profound discussion involving the role of experiment in experiments in physics, because the title of today's uh, talk by the Honorable Distinguished Padma Shri Awardee R. H. C. Varmaji is role of experiments in developing physics. It appears to be very simple because we all have learned the importance of experiments from our school time and have some knowledge of physics experiment. But many of you who will be physicians, who will be physicists, I believe these basic tips and little more information about this, uh, this particular trust area will be useful to you and beneficial to you. So it is profound. This impact of this lecture will be very profound because our eminent guest will tell us about and take us uh, through this journey. Without further ado, let me take the honor once again of uh, welcoming our eminent guest, Padma Shri Etsy, Professor Etsy Varmanji, and which is one of the greatest uh, scientific minds uh, of India and who has revolutionized the method of scientific learning. I personally am a fan of uh, uh, Professor Verma. I've referred to his many books and Professor Verma's book has always been a wonderful source of knowledge for almost all the students of physics. And those who study, they will always take his name. And if you ask them one book, they will refer his uh, name of the book. So it may happen in future also, if you haven't uh, 
uh, read his books, you will somewhere will have to use and read his books and you will remember sir's name. Uh, indeed, uh, Professor Verma's book on concepts of physics is one of the most uh, definitive and instrumental interventions in the domain of scientific education in India. And his last posting as a researcher uh, and a professor, sir has served as a professor at the prestigious IIT Kanpur. So when I told my husband that today Professor S. Verma is coming, he belongs to Kanpur and he especially mentioned, kindly convey my regards to him because when he was preparing for IIT, he said, without his books, I wouldn't be nowhere. So, uh, uh, Maji, your fan following is uh, far and wide. Uh, and uh, whomsoever I spoke to, and uh, they have been saying, what are you telling Professor Verma himself is coming? So, I think our students should be, uh, they should know how fortunate they are. It takes a lifetime to meet you, a lifetime to even understand your books. And they, our students have got this uh, opportunity to meet you, to hear from you and learn from you. So a warm welcome to you once again. I'm very glad that you are part of us uh, uh, this afternoon. And lastly, I would say on behalf of HSNC University, on behalf of Casey College, thank you very much sir, for accepting this invitation to join this webinar and uh, bless this institution that we organize such events for our uh, junior college students uh, to be aligned in the right direction and in the field of sciences. Because uh, we also feel that, sir, the science education is not, uh, which is uh, take, takes place only in the classrooms or uh, in the books alone, but scientific learning. The most important role is played by the process of experimentation, which you have been talking about over the years. So once again, I thank the team, Casey, for organizing this uh, spectrum, especially uh, in the uh, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahatso, uh, the fourth speaker as Professor Itzi Sharma sir, Verma sir. So a warm I welcome to all the students uh, across Mumbai, across uh, India who are part of this particular program. And uh, thank you to the team Casey for uh, putting in all the efforts uh, to organize these programs always for our students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind words. Thank you, ma'am, for your valuable and enriching words. Today we have with us, we are very delighted to have Padma Shri Professor H.C. Verma, sir. You all know that he needs no introduction. We all know him as a renowned figure of knowledge. He's a facilitator for students in the learning process. And for educators like us, he's an inspiration, guide, and idol figure. I call upon my colleague, Mr. Vilas Basre, to formally introduce our esteemed guest for today. Over to you, Vilas. Thank you, Yasmin, madam. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to introduce a legend of physics, a great Indian experimental physicist, Professor H. T. Verma. Verma, sir. Mumbai Cha KC College Madun, me apla hardik hardik swagat karto. Before I start, let us all together congratulate our physics idol and the ideal physics professor. H.C. Verma for being awarded the most prestigious and the fourth highest civilian award Padma Shri by the government of India on 8th November 2021 for his continuous contribution in the field of science and engineering. Heartiest congratulations, sir. We all feel proud of you. Professor H. T. Verma, he is the most popular professor of physics in India. He is not only famous in India, but also around the world. The another legend of physics from the America, Professor Walter Levin from the MIT Institute. Recently, he congratulated Sir on receiving this most prestigious award, Padma Shri. Sir, we all feel proud of you. Professor H.C. Verma has started his schooling and graduation, that is B.S. in Physics, from Patna, Bihar. Sir has obtained his M.S. in Physics and Ph.D. from IIT Kanpur. After completing Ph.D. from IIT Kanpur, Sir joined the Patna Science College in 1980, 
as a lecturer and reader and continued his service for 15 years. After resigning from Patna Science College, the War Master joined the Department of Physics at IIT Kanpur in 1994 as an assistant professor. He is retired from IIT Kanpur as a professor on 30th June 2017. His research interests had been in the nanofabrication using the focused ion beam, magnetism in graphite on irradiation by ion beam, nano size around 4 nanometer to 20 nanometer magnetic materials. Iron based alloys, earth science, etc. Sir is well known for his most popular books, Concepts of Physics, for JE and NEET aspirants. These books are a real blessing for all of us. Concept of Physics becomes household name amongst every science student as well as the teachers. The one thing which I remember while using this Concept of Physics book. The monkey and the rope related problems are the most popular problems. Today, that monkey would be very, very happy today, sir. He has published 139 research papers in reputed journals. He has developed more than 600 physics experiments, which can be used by teachers as demos in their classroom. He has also produced a set of 45 videos in Hindi at school level, and the nine video courses online courses for students as well as teachers. Me and my colleagues have successfully completed these courses and obtained the cert certificate for the same. So I used to call us as physics learning friends, in short, PLF. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, giving us <laughs> such type of so great nice. knowledge. So nice. So far, Professor Wama might have given the training to more than 8,000 teachers. He has made a group called the Ustai Physics Teachers. Professor Wama is the executive committee member of Indian Association of Physics Teachers, that's IAPT, which works for the physics education for school and colleges. Professor Wama started an NGO called the Shiksha Sopan, along with IIT Kanpur faculty members, students, and the local youths. The purpose of Shiksha Sopan is to impart the value-based education to economically weaker section of the society. Sir has also started the Prativa Potion Yojana, which provides the residential summer camp at IIT Kanpur for the thousand of children from a remote village. Identifies the best hidden talent and provides them the partial financial support for their school fees as well as books. And the guidance for the national exam like the Kishor Vaganik Prostan Yojana, KYPY, and the National Talent Search Examination, NTSC, etc. In 2011, Professor Wama initiated a new project, National Anveshika Network of India, NANI, which has become a flagship program of IAPT. Anveshika are established in 22 cities of India. Around 1,000 schools and colleges are getting benefited from this project. A number of activities for teachers, motivation and training, developing teaching aids, etc., are going on through these centers. A unique program of Anveshika project is National Anveshika Experimental Skill Test Nest. This is a unique annual event to encourage the culture of doing the science experiments where a national level competition is organized for school as well as college level on actually performing the experiments. Through the Anveshika network, the more than 8,000 students and more than 1,600 schools and colleges appear in the test every year. Okay, sir, we can't wait anymore. Sir, we all students and teachers, we are eagerly waiting to hear you. So I request, sir, to bless us with the knowledge of physics through the role of experiments in developing physics. Students and teachers are requested to put their questions to Deepika Madam in chat box. So I request Thank you. H. Thank you, Vama, sir, please continue your session, sir. Thank you, Vilas Bhai. Thank you, and, sir. Uh, thank you, Principal Ma'am. I just I was listening to your uh, profile, and there's so much to learn from you because uh, some of <laughs> 
<laughs> some of the areas which we want to develop uh, at Shiksha Zupan are in tune with uh, your work as a researcher, as experimentalist. And from the materials that we have, and humic material, you said, the materials that we have uh, around, we want to do some research activities with these so that our degree college students, BSc students, MSc students from uh, colleges where we do not have facilities for doing even the regular experiments, syllabus-based experiments. So they should also get some flavor of what research is and how research is being done and what do people do in uh, that PhD programs and also so some kind of a research exposure lab with uh, the focus on using or understanding or studying the materials that are commonly available in the area. So I'm sure uh, we will be benefiting from your expertise and uh, your work. And at some, some stage, I would like to tell more about this student research exposure lab that we are trying to de develop at Shiksha Zupan. And your guidance will be needed uh, in that development. Uh, I'm, I'm hum humbled. I'm indeed humbled. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's reversed. Rather, I would need your help to create such experiments. Uh, but yes, uh, there has been an effort uh, to devise such techniques where, let's say, nanosciences a student of 12th and a student can see what is nanotechnology yes. means yeah. Yeah. and how we can do auto ignition on a hot plate and one beaker can talk about <laughs> the nanosciences. So we yeah. have tried to uh, actually come up with such experiments where a school child also can see what a nanoscience means Wonderful. and how a beaker, a small beaker and a, and a, you know, and a hot plate can teach them the 20 nanometer size particle. How we <laughs> Wonderful. <see> <laughs> Wonderful. So I'll be in touch with you. <laughs> and you know, it's because of the basic concept, which I think I cleared with your book, so uh, you are that way mentor to me. So yeah, I hence I said yeah, the kids are very fortunate that they're getting to hear from the mentor himself, who has mentored their principal. So uh, thank you so much, sir. I'm really humbled uh, with your uh, kind thank words. You. And thank you, Yasmin, for uh, <laughs> persuading and following uh, uh, so many times so, and getting getting uh, me on the board. So thank you everyone uh, from this uh, KC College team and today I'll be, I didn't get much time to prepare, I thought I will prepare it today so that it will be fresh, <laughs> meant for KC only, but somehow I got delayed uh, during my journey and didn't get much of time, but still the basic theme I would like to present. So the whole idea is that uh, in our schools, colleges, uh, at majority of the places, we do much of theory, but uh, experiments are uh, somehow neglected because the examination system is such that uh, marks obtained in the experimental papers, experiment-based papers, their uh, technology is different than, uh, than in the theory papers. And so these experiments are mostly neglected. But if science has to go ahead in India, then our students must understand that experiments are indeed very important. Even if we go for a theory, but then every theory, every, everything that has been developed in the name of theory has come out from some experiment. So that relation I would like to bring out from today's talk. So I have prepared uh, hurriedly some, some uh, presentation. So let me try to share that. And, okay. Right. So I believe that I'm sharing my screen and here I do a full screen. All right, is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, role sir. of experiments in the development of physics. That is uh, our title. All right, so, uh, okay, you have been students, you have been uh, instructed that your questions you can uh, put in chat box mm, and direct it to Deepika ji. But I will request uh, the organizers 
to allow the students to unmute and ask the questions directly <laughs> during the presentation. So and, uh, uh, let's have it uh, in uh, interactive mode. And uh, I would love to get the comments right there when I'm, I'm there. In fact, I will be asking some questions also. I would be asking some questions also, and students can unmute and answer this question. And if uh, there is too much of uh, noise, then perhaps so uh, you can intervene and, and do something. But let us let me start with the first question. This is about nuclear model of atom. So my question to the students is: Which experiment triggered the development of nuclear mo model of atom? Uh, students, you all can raise hands. Uh, so, sir, we'll unmute you and you can ask question to sir. Okay. The organizers have to unmute, right? The students cannot wait themselves. Yeah, you can, if someone can read it for me. Uh, it's a raised hands. If there are some answers, so let, let me know. So could it be rather for school? People are raising experiment? hands. People are raising hands. The alpha ray scattering experiment. Alpha ray scattering experiment. All right. Any any other? Any other? Any other? Yash Mandal, Siddhi. Rutherford's gold foil experiment. Gold foil experiment, okay. The same as alpha, alpha particle scattering experiment. So that's right. Okay, which experiment triggered the development of nuclear model of atom? And uh, you very rightly you have said that it is the alpha particle scattering experiment or Rutherford's gold foil experiment. That is how popularly it is known. All right. Now the... Okay, so can you recognize this person? I'm just rather sorry. Huh? Can you? The, he is the person who has uh, oh, participated God. in doing that experiment. And there's another person, and he's a third person. This is this is a trio which is responsible for that experiment. So from the left, okay, from the right, that, that should be easy to recognize. Uh, Mahi, Deep, Jayesh. Okay, very good. The person is rather food on the, uh, that the third from left. And who is in the middle? Uh, Siddharth Gupta, Professor Nayan Verma. Who is in the middle? Uh, hello, sir. First of all, my lot of respect to you. I just wanted to see you live. <laughs> it is pleasure seeing you and I'm teaching physics. We read your books and we get a lot of guidance, sir. Thank you. I just wanted to take your blessings, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So the person... Wilda, Wilda uh, somebody can please allow me to switch on the video post. Uh, let, let's, take, let, let's take answer from the students. So on the, on the, the third one from the left is uh, Professor Rutherford and uh, Sir, uh, I'm not very sure, but is it J.J. Thompson in the middle? J.J. Thompson in the middle? No. J.J. <laughs> Thompson was senior to Rutherford. And these pictures are roughly in this, on the same timeline. <laughs> All right. So the person uh, who is at the left, the first one is uh, Hans Geiger. Have you heard the name of Geiger? And the one in the middle is Marsden. This is uh, Marsden. And uh, Marsden was a bachelor's student that time when this alpha particle experiment was done. Okay, by the way, these two people 
the geiger and masden they were the persons they were the the persons who performed that experiment okay and rutherford was the team leader rutherford was the lab uh, in charge professor and in his team geiger was a junior research associate that time a fresh phd almost a fresh phd and uh, this uh, middle person masden the he was a bachelor level student and in the university it was customary or it was mandatory to do a research project uh, before getting that degree of uh, of bachelors so masden was everyone every all students had to do some project in uh, one laboratory or the other one research group or the other so this uh, masden approached geiger to assign some project uh, work so that to uh, see and submit it and get his degree that 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 uh, is uh, at, at some places in india also that uh, is there but mostly in, in at msc level dissertation or doing some research but not at the bsc level but uh, here it was at bsc level itself so he approached geiger and then geiger went to rutherford and asked what the project can be given to this guy and rutherford suggested that because in his lab this uh, study of alpha particle scattering was going on for uh, for some time so alpha particle scattering by mica or, or other things uh, those kind of studies were going on and geiger was the main uh, architect of all those experiments so rutherford uh, just said that okay he is a bsc student so i'll just ask him to put the detector on the other side and see if there are some some there's some scattering on the back side also because at bsc level you have to give project to so many students so something the basic idea is that the student goes to the lab learns the techniques of performing experiments get familiar with uh, all the kind all the kind of thought processes uh, and measurement issues and uh, all those things so that can be done with uh, any any kind of uh, project so this was a casual type of project so Geiger was doing it in the forward direction, and uh, rather for suggested that uh, let uh, Marston do it on the back side. Put the detector. Uh, he was very sure that nothing will come, but uh, this Marston will learn many things. And uh, the research paper that uh, reported this alpha particle scattering results. that carries the name of Geiger and Marston only, and rather for is acknowledged. in that that particular paper okay fine so this is the kind of setup of that alpha particle scattering experiment in the textbooks we have a very very different kind of picture some kind of a ribbon elliptical ribbon type of uh, detection and an alpha particle going on hitting some coil and then getting scattered in all directions so on that ribbon and then uh, people say that okay on the back side there was some one in 8000 back scattered and all but the experimental setup was very very different in fact uh, they set three parts three targets in this experiment and the first one was to study the scattering of alpha particle from different metals and this setup on the left is for that i have taken it from the original paper of geiger and master right so this is a tube in which there is there some radioactive material and some emanation comes out and then the alpha particles are coming from here and the detector is here this is zinc sulfide screen and if alpha particle fall on zinc sulfide then there will be some kind of illumination there and uh, that illumination has to be seen through this uh, microscope and counted but then uh, this is a lead this is a lead uh, piece here so the alpha particles will not be able to reach this zinc sulfide because of this lead in between but then if a metal foil is put here this vertical rr if a metal foil is put here and if alpha particles strike this metal this metal piece and then if uh, some of them back scatter that means they are deviated from their path with such a great angle that they come out on the same side 
then there will be a chance that that particular alpha particle and or those alpha particles will hit this zinc sulfide and that can be seen in the microscope so that is the setup for uh, studying the alpha particle scattering from a metal and the idea of this part of the experiment was to see for different metals and study the number of alpha particles which back a scatter if at all if at all they do as a function of atomic weight this experiment was done in 1909 and that time atomic weight uh, the concept of atomic weight was very much there by chemistry experimentalists so they wanted to relate once they they start getting the data they wanted to relate with the atomic uh, weight and therefore different metals and some nine metals or eight metals were used and gold was only one of them all right and this setup is a different setup here in this they wanted to know that if uh, say alpha particles are falling on a metal sheet here is the metal sheet how many of them how many of them will will come on the same side right so here it was to see the effect of atomic weight or different metals and here it was that uh, you put one particular metal and then uh, you see that if 100 particles suppose go here how many of them will come back on the same side and the setup is uh, is very different from this here the radioactive material is deposited uh, at this place this is this is lead uh, um, plate and on that a small radioactive material is uh, measured amount of measured amount of radioactive material is deposited here yes. and then uh, from here since the, the the amount is measured in milligrams and people knew that 1 milligram of uh, say radium uh, carbide how many alpha particle it will scatter it it will emit and then how much is the solid angle here so how much how many alpha particles will fall here per second in a particular area those theoretical calculations were made and then by measuring the scattered alpha particles which are detected from this zinc sulfide they could find that one in some 8000 alpha particles come on the same side now this metal here this metal here which was used to study this part how many of them are back scattering this is also not gold it was platinum so here there were nine metals gold was one of them and here it was uh, platinum not gold so this anyway this is the experiment and this experiment triggered that nuclear model theory so rutherford uh, developed uh, so all right this is a very famous quote so rather this is a rutherford paper that was geiger and marston paper where they reported the data and uh, he this is uh, rather for some he took some two years to understand the data and formulate that theory and it's all classical theory you, know, you have uh, you had to assume that there is a nucleus at the at the center very tiny of a volume of some 10 some volume of 10 to the power minus 12 centimeters all these are coming from theory now the data are there so that's the importance the data is there and uh, then uh, during this two years he asked geiger to perform more data in the forward direction and he did and then all those uh, theta dependence and z dependence uh, all those things were were studied to arrive at this theory arrive at this theory and uh, then he, he 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 developed this theory that all the positive charge and most of the mass of the atom is confined in 10 power minus 12 cm radius volume here and then uh, the electrons are outside so that is how the alpha this nuclear model is developed this theory is developed and the triggering experiment was that alpha particle now the next question to you what is the main limitation of rutherford model in in, in ncert book or in any book which introduces this uh, nuclear model of uh, atom by rutherford then after that they have a heading 
limitations of rutherford model and then they cite some limitations so what is the main limitation of rutherford model so stability of an atom pardon stability of an atom stability of an atom okay yeah someone else so ha huh? sir if the electrons are moving in this uh -huh. particular order around the nucleus so uh -huh. uh why don't the nucle why don't the electrons uh, bang into okay. the nucleus okay ha uh, that is the stability thing yeah that is the main limitation that is uh, cited but now if i if you look into that paper of rutherford it is here rather e rutherford and rutherford philosophical magazine 21 volume number 21 1911 Page six 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 sixty nine six six nine two six eight eight. If you go through this paper, this is uh, openly available at uh, internet. From that paper, I have taken these sentences: charge plus capital N into E at the center of atom in a volume of radius about ten power minus twelve centimeters. And then look at this. uh surrounded by negative electricity minus ne uniformly distributed in a sphere of radius capital r this is from the original rutherford's experiment uh this paper in which he has uh, derived all the equations and shown that this alpha particle is making only one collision inside that atom and then getting uh, scattered and for uh, the negative charges he never says that they go in circular orbits okay minus ne uniformly distributed in a sphere of radius capital r and specifically in that same paper very specifically it is it is written the question of stability of the atom proposed need not be considered at this stage for this will obviously depend upon the minute structure of atom and so on so on okay so do you think that uh, we are doing something uh, uh, wrong with rutherford the rutherford does not say that it goes in circles and we say that uh, it cannot go in circles because it will radiate and it will fall into the nucleus and the atom will not be stable and this this and that and call it that the text is all right if electrons are supposed to go in a circular orbits then according to the theory which was prevailing by that, that time before this uh, quantization came they should radiate maxwell's equations and whatever classical theory of electromagnetism was there if something a charged particle is accelerated it should emit energy so that is that text is perfect that if it goes in circle it is accelerated therefore it will emit red and therefore it will lose energy and therefore it will fall. but then uh, putting rutherford's name there and calling it limitation of rutherford was said in his paper that uh, they are what electrons are doing he has said that it's a different topic and i am not researching on that i am not discussing that the question of stability of the atom proposed need not be considered at this stage <laughs> but still we say that uh, it's a limitation of rutherford model <laughs> okay so let's uh, move on and we go to another theory the theory that mixed up space and time which theory we are talking i am talking of which theory i am talking of the picture is there that that will give you enough for uh, in so the theory of relativity yes the theory of relativity uh, formulated by albert einstein in the year Which year? Which year he formulated this this uh, theory? So nineteen fourteen. 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 Nineteen
<laughs> yes, 1905. In 1905, we formulated this special theory of relativity, what we call special theory of relativity, where he talks of uh, different inertial frames of references and what happens to the velocity, how velocity is transformed, how position is transformed and other things are transformed, how electric field is transformed, how magnetic field is transformed once you go from one frame to other frame, right? And then uh, later on, uh, he, he generalized this theory uh, to include, uh, in order to include non-inertial frames, from there he goes into the gravitation and then comes this uh, general theory of relativity around 1912 or, or so. Uh, it, it became uh, very, very popular and Einstein was very famous after that general theory of relativity. So it all started in 1905. When uh, he formulates uh, theory of relativity, the, the special theory of relativity and later he generalized it to general theory of relativity. Now, which experiment? <laughs> which experiment? <laughs> okay, this is this is the journal in which this this uh, 1905 uh, paper was published, and the question is, which experiment is behind this theory, special theory of relativity, a theory of relativity as such? All theories. Somehow they are originated from some experiment. <laughs> so which experiment is behind this uh, theory of relativity, 1905? So observation of solar eclipse. Observation of solar eclipse, okay. That was in 1911, I believe, or 12 or something, 13, <laughs> like that. Actually, this observation of solar eclipse was made to verify Einstein's theory. Okay, Einstein theory predicted. See the cycle. See the cycle. There is an experiment. Experiment gives some result. People are not able to understand that result from the existing theories. And therefore, someone comes out with a new theory. All right, so there is some experiment, someone has done some experiment and then the data are there. And those data are not understandable from the existing theories. And then the new theory is created. So that is where I say that all theories somewhere come from the experiments. But then once the theory is there, this theory, not only it explains the, those data, which were not understandable with the existing theories. Once the theory is there, it will predict something. And once it predicts something, then the experimentalists will get, get a job. They have to verify that prediction. And if that prediction comes out to be true, then our faith in this new theory is strengthened. And if it doesn't, then the theory has to be modified. So that is a cycle. From the theory, we, from the experiments, we go to the theory. And from the theory, there are more predictions. And then the experiments will be, will be, will be created, fabricated, designed uh, to verify whether those predictions are correct or not. And if those predictions are correct, then yes, the theory uh, becomes more uh, uh, believable. <laughs> so, and then more experiments will be done and so on and so forth. So that cycle goes on. Right. So this, uh, this solar eclipse and the deviation of light when it goes through a massive body in, in sky, so that was an experiment. The data was collected to verify and that was used to verify Einstein's theory of uh, gravitation, which, which we call general theory of relativity. The basic experiment, the initial experiment, which, uh, which triggered Einstein in, to come into this game of relativity, that was this, that was this. And I'm very sure that all of our students who are here in this webinar, they have, they have reproduced this experiment. They have reproduced the results. Uh, have you done this experiment? 
you have a coil, you have a coil here, and then you have a magnet, and the coil is connected to a galvanometer. And then uh, when you you move this magnet uh, near the coil, this poles can go in the coil and come out. Or even if you move it uh, close to the loop, there's a deflection in this uh, galvanometer. Yeah, we call it, we call it, which experiment? You move the magnet and they lay this electric current is produced in the circuit. And that is shown by the galvanometer. Electromagnetic induction. Yes, electromagnetic induction, a very, very popular demonstration. And I'm very sure that everyone must have done or at least seen. At least your teachers have shown this uh, in the classroom or in the laboratories. Now, this is the experiment. This is the experiment which is uh, um, which originates which uh, which triggers Einstein to formulate that special theory of relativity. This experiment is not understandable. Some of the aspects of this experiment were not understandable with the original, uh, with the existing theories. And that is why, why Einstein was in, in that particular game. The title of the paper, yeah. The title of the paper, in fact, I had shown in German. Basically, the, it was in German. This is the title. I will not be able to pronounce it uh, correctly. This is the, but the English translation would be, English translation would be, uh, yeah, on the electrodynamics of the moving bodies, right? On the, on the electrodynamics of moving bodies. So here it is moving or the coil can be moved. Okay. The magnet may remain stationary and coil can be moved and what kind of uh, electric current is produced and magnetic field is there and so on, so on. So on the electrodynamics of moving bodies, that is the title of 1905 paper of Einstein in which he formulates special theory of relativity. So this is the experiment. This is the experiment which led to which led to special theory of relativity and then later general theory of relativity. And uh, I just read uh, one or two sentences, not this uh, full essay. Uh, this is the first paragraph of that paper. It is known that Maxwell's electrodynamics as usually understood at present time when applied to moving bodies lead to asymmetries which do not appear, blah, blah. Take for example, yeah, this is the line. Take, for example, the reciprocal electrodynamic action of a magnet and a conductor. So he's referring to this uh, experiment, a magnet and a conductor. This is the first sentence of this paper, first paragraph. Now take, uh, for example, the reciprocal uh, electrodynamic action of a magnet and a conductor. The observable phenomena here depends only on the relative motion of the conductor and the magnet whereas customary view draws a sharp distinction, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this was the experiment. Now come to another theory, quantized electron orbits. You know what is quantized electron orbits? In the atom, the electrons cannot have uh, any kind of orbits. If you go with orbit model, Bohr's model, for example. So quantized orbits are there, no, we call n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3. When it electron in hydrogen atom, electron falls from n equal to 3 to n equal to 2, a particular wavelength of light is emitted and all those things. You know, so you, I'm sure you are all familiar with uh, this, that uh, only some particular orbits called stationary states, so they are allowed in which the electron does not emit radiation. So which experiment is behind this? Bohr's model, for example, and later Schrodinger's uh, formulation of the same thing. Why Niels Bohr made that Bohr's model? De Broglie hypothesis. Oh, De Broglie came. Uh, De Broglie came later, much later.
discontinuous what, hydrogen what, spectrum yeah. yeah what was the problem which was not understandable by the existing theories and therefore niels bohr came out with uh, a new theory in which he said that the angular momentum is integral multiple of h by 2 pi and this and that from there he derived that uh, the electrons must go in very specific orbits only so what was that 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 observation or data which was stability so stability so there was no explanation for hydrogen spectrum correct it was the hydrogen spectrum and someone had measured that hydrogen spectrum in fact uh, the measurement was on uh, solar radiation only and uh, from there uh, those hydrogen lines were were derived and then it it, it came with that so all this bose theory the schrodinger equation this was the thing this was the thing you have for hydrogen you have a particular wavelength another wavelength another wavelength another wavelength nothing in between uh, if you take a hydrogen in a discharge tube and somehow uh, make it glow and then the light that comes from the discharge tube you disperse it using a prism or a grating you find that you get a red line of a certain wavelength whatever 654 and then you have the second line is here for some 487 nanometer or so nothing in between so these discrete wavelengths light of only some discrete wavelengths coming out of the hydrogen when it is excited that was the experimental observation which people were not able to understand and uh, then neil bohr come neil bohr comes and then he formulates that quantized orbit uh, model and and then shows that well this data can be very well explained from there and then uh, there are some other data which is which are not explainable even using bose model then the schrodinger's formulation comes heisenberg It's four and the whole quantum theory comes from from there okay so that was the the theme i wanted to to bring out that uh, experiments are really very very important in the development of a subject like physics and this it's always it's always if if, uh, if some experiment is there some data is there and theory says no it, it, that the existing theory says that no it cannot be like that we will not uh, put aside the experiment we will modify the theory or we will come out with a new theory and once the new theory comes in of course uh, that theory leads to even more uh, it gives ideas for doing more experiments and those more experiments uh, can give rise to more theories and so on so on and that is how physics is, is developed so here yeah, this is a person uh, niels bohr and he is uh, angstrom who measured these uh, these wavelengths uh, much much earlier and which remained a puzzle for a very long time before this uh, rather force nucleus at the center and electrons surrounding that not in circular orbits that circular orbit thing is uh, is niels bohr's uh, brain child not rather force all right so wave particle duality which experiment taught us wave particle duality light can behave as particles light so can behave as waves effect. yes photoelectric effect yeah very good photoelectric one once again 1905 einstein albert einstein huh? but then uh, this uh, theory that light can behave as particles and therefore uh, it has a definite uh, momentum and energy and the collisions go like particles in one go there is a collision conservation of angular conservation of momentum conservation of energy and you understand the uh, the theory so the same light can interfere diffract get polarized so those are then it is behaving as waves and the same light can do photoelectric effect where it uh, 
transfers energy to the lattice to the electron uh, in one go so these are the these these are the theories very fantastic theory fantastic theory the same object can be behave sometimes as wave and sometimes as particle but from where this whole thing comes in the whole thing is, comes from the experiment of uh, photoelectric effect and these are the legends albert einstein and <laughs> who is he <laughs> hertz first time he observed this photoelectric effect he was not doing the experiment for photoelectric effect but then uh, he was doing experiments on protection of electromagnetic wave but he saw that photoelectric effect and then he mentioned that this kind of effect is there and uh, this 1905 paper uh, when einstein came comes in and then gives uh, the explanation then uh, all these things very well explained and uh, who is this person who is this person lenard i believe i believe no he, this is lenard and this is holwak this is lenard and this is holwak they performed those experiments of course this hertz has observed it uh, while doing some experiments on that production of electromagnetic waves and finally einstein comes up with the theory to explain the data which is collected by this lenard Holwak had done a qualitative experiment only, but this person has really collected data, and those data were explained by this wave particle duality. So that's the kind of uh, interplay. Neutrino, you know, you know what is neutrino? Fantastic particle and fantastic theories. All that starts from the observation of a number of beta particles in radioactive decay. of this 210 bismuth so these are the data points these are the experimental data how many how many electrons come out how many beta particles come out in in radioactive decay with this kinetic energy this much of kinetic energy mev mega electron volt so these many how many how many particles with this much of kinetic energy these many how many particles with this much kinetic energy these many this is the experimental data not understandable by the existing theory and it was so such a difficult puzzle that uh, even people like niels bohr started suspecting the conservation laws conservation of energy and thought that it is only a statistical law not to, not event by event it need not be obeyed but then uh, this uh, this experimental data led to the formulation of this uh, theory of neutrino and fermi was the person who was uh, responsible to get that uh, theory and develop that theory and then uh, once the theory was developed then the experimentalists uh, started working on it and finally it was uh, detected by the scientists and the group in 1956 and the theory was formulated uh, in, in 1934 so <laughs> you see the theory was formulated in 1934 the beta particle experiments were done much before that but then the theory predicted that uh, neutrinos will do this kind of reaction that kind of reactions and therefore it can be detected if proper experimentations are done and people worked so hard experimentalists worked so hard that they finally uh, detected neutrino coming from solar radiation in in 1956 and after that so much of neutrino physics has been has been developed so i think i have uh, i have done enough uh, uh to show the the relation between experiments and theory and that will be the end of my talk <laughs> thank you very much thank you very much sir yeah thank you what an engrossing session One second, let us share the screen. Where do I come out of this share mode? Yes, stop share. Okay, thank you, sir. The post has stopped. Okay, good, good. Very interactive, very nice, and special treat for us paper two fans. <laughs> sir, you made our day. <laughs> I just like to say that human greed 
has no bounds. Now our <laughs> mind is craving for an offline session of you. <laughs> Actually, I will be very happy to do that uh, if the situations allow me. Yes. When you we'll come to KC College for an offline session, we assure <laughs> you that you will have a realization. Our applause, our hospitality is one of a kind. We are very different. We have no match. <laughs> very good. I look for what after okay. making the this is a demand come request. <laughs> after making this demand come request, I'll pass on the baton to my colleague, Ms. Deepika Palekar, for further question and answers and to propose a vote of thanks. Over to you, Deepika. Yes, thank you so much, Yasmin ma'am. Good a uh, very good evening, sir. There are a few good questions evening. which I yes, sir. Yeah. There are a few yeah. questions that are coming on the my chat box. Okay. Uh, one student of 12 standard, sir, he is asking like while studying physics in the 12 standard, what exactly the approach of the student has to be there towards the physics subject? <laughs> well, uh, college physics teachers can help the boy better. The general thing is that uh, study physics with a uh, uh, very happy mood. Okay, you enjoy it. Learning must be done in an enjoyable environment. So that the clue, no stress, right? No stress, no examination and all that. So there are two things I will say. One is prepare, preparing for the examination. And another thing, enjoying the subject. Okay. And both are important. Yeah, when, when you have to prepare the examination, maybe that you are not learning. Maybe. But it's okay. No problem. Uh, one has to aim for a good uh, score and good grade card. But then uh, if you put your 80% of time, 85% of time, even 90% of time to prepare for the examination, 10 to 15% time should be reserved for without thinking of examination, I am studying. Okay, so if you can do this kind of uh, time allotment and when you are in this mode of 10-15%, then uh, you just don't think of any examination, any future, what will happen. And so, uh, and then, then you will find that, okay, you are learning it very fast. So that is the general thing I would say and the details depend on person to person. Yes, that's true, sir. Uh, one more question that is coming. Like one student is asking, there is a 12 standard HSC board examination and simultaneously they have to prepare for the JE and the NEET and the competitive examination. So how to have a balance between the both of them together? <laughs> See, uh, what is the difference between the board examination and the JE examination? If uh, you want to make the balance between the two, you, you, first you have to understand what are the differences between these two examinations. It is based on the same syllabus. All the topics are same. JE will not ask you for anything that is not there in your board. It is the same syllabus, same topic. So if you prepare that topic you are preparing for both the examinations together. But if you are not preparing, preparing, the, preparing the topic, but you are preparing the questions, then yes, the questions which are asked in the board and the questions which are asked in JE or NEET, those are different, of different kinds also. Okay. So the best strategy is to learn the subject, to learn those topics, to analyze them, to comprehend the things, to practice them. And if you do that, you are actually doing preparation for both of them. And then fine tuning, only fine tuning. Fine tuning is, uh, okay, this kind of pap paper is there, objectives or true, false or matching or this and that. Those are only fine tuning. Once I know the topic, doesn't matter what kind of question is, is asked. So 80% of things should go common. 
and for 20 percent uh, you fine tune your strategies for this hsc board separately and you need separately and the balance will be made very easily that's true sir yes one more student is asking sir if there are three four months are remaining for the je exam how exactly will revise the complete physics in this three and four months? <laughs> and after after one month, you will ask how to revise the whole physics in two months. <laughs> and after one month further, you will ask how to revise the whole physics in one month. <laughs> That's true, <laughs> sir. <laughs> this is because the examination is uh, is making you stressed, right? So the best thing is that uh, you you prepare your things, you study your topic, whatever physics, chemistry, mathematics, or botany, zoology, whatever it is, you you study that, you enjoy that, you understand that, even if it is a few less number of chapters, doesn't matter, because uh, ultimately in the long run, whether you pass JE or you don't pass JE, doesn't make much of difference does not make much of difference. I did not pass JEE. <laughs> I did not even appear for JEE. It, it hardly matters. So you, you take it easy. You take it easy. The, the game is that I put everything to understand the topic. I put uh, everything, all efforts are to be made uh, to solve the problems. And if, uh, if I'm not able to solve the problems, be happy. Okay, if uh, you solve a problem and the problem gets solved in the first go, what have you learned from that? You have not, you have not learned anything. You knew the thing, right? You knew the things, and that is why you could solve the problem. So by solving the problem, you did not learn anything. You had already learned that. You knew it, and that is why you were able to solve the problem. But if you fail to solve the problem, then there is an opportunity. <laughs> There's something which is missing that you do not recognize uh, to start with. There is some misconception which is there in your mind which you do not know, which is not uh, allowing you to solve the problem properly. So this is an opportunity. Invest time on it. Struggle with that. Uh, see uh, how, uh, why it is not getting solved, what, uh, what wrong concepts, concepts that are there in my mind, why an equation which I'm applying is not applicable there. Once you analyze that, then uh, you are learning that topic. Focus on that. Focus on that. Forget about the examination. If your preparation is good, the probability of uh, Competing in the examinations will be high. And your preparation, your preparation will be good only when you study with a stress-free mind. And then uh, your focus, your, your target is not to crack the examination. Your target is to understand the, the subject threadbare. Then uh, your preparation will be good. And once your preparation will be good, the chances of uh, competing in that examination will also enhance. So that is my take that uh, don't uh, get too much attached with these competitive examinations and focus on your studies. Fantastic, sir. Yes. So in relation to this, only one question has came. How to exactly increase the quality of studying and how to get rid of the distraction and train the mind to focus on the studies based on this, <laughs> all the present scenarios? <laughs> okay, so for physics, uh, our life is much simpler. It is simple to do this, right? And this is because the life itself, the 24 hours that we spent, morning, evening, lunch time, breakfast time, sports time, uh, sleeping time, <laughs> Every time you are surrounded by physics events. So true, sir. So if you are distracting, fine. Where will you distract? Where will you go? You will always have uh, tube lights on in the evening. Right? The light will be coming. Shadows will be formed. 
varieties of patterns you you can see well, many times when you look at the headlight of a car a, a long streak of light is seen around that uh, headlight so some diffraction is always there right in, in kitchen uh, if something is getting cooked lot of thermodynamics is there heat transmission then the boiling point depending on the pressure lot of thing the that latent heat the water is converting into steam so the nature will not allow you to get distracted from the textbook you are getting distracted but once you okay enough and uh, now let put off this uh, this study thing and uh, you leave your table where will you go where you will you go the electromagnetic waves will not leave you so once you start seeing physics in these events okay once you start seeing physics in these events then you will not be distracted then you will be revising it all the time all the time you will be revising your concepts through these events so try to practice this whenever whenever you are there see what physics is going on here <laughs> then, you, you are putting uh, on your shoes uh, to go for a, a walk hey, then just just try to see what kind of forces you are applying on on, on your shoes <laughs> so once you get into this practice then uh, your efficiency output by input will be very very high that's so nicely explained sir yes dipika madam one more yes yeah. sir Uh, are there any question more questions are there yes yes one more okay. question is there. Okay. so if you comment yes uh one per student is asking uh, like what exact incident sir that has turned you towards the physics like i want to do the <laughs> career in the physics only that one incident sir <laughs> it was not a discontinuous function <laughs> <laughs> it was a continuous and differentiable function <laughs> so gradually i got interested in physics because uh, whatever i was reading in the textbooks i was seeing in the nature so that gradually brought me towards physics that's great so yes <laughs> yes we'll ask uh, yes sir sir i wanted to ask one question sir <laughs> okay <laughs> please please uh, sir actually uh, just now you are explain about that uh, atomic model so basically in the 11th and 12th we have studied uh, you know classical theory that uh, electrons are revolving around the nucleus and uh, when we go further then the quantum mechanics is applied to explain that so on quantum level that theory and here the planetary model where the gravitational uh, uh, field and force we consider here to explain that the planets are revolving around the sun is there any theory sir that which explain this planetary model as well as this atomic model on quantum level basis uh, no atomic uh, I, i don't understand it well perhaps let me let me try to repeat what uh, i understood uh, yes sir I, I actually uh, see on quantum level uh, sir different forces uh, not like that classical theory whatever correct. Uh, we correct. are studying here correct correct uh, that electron is revolving around the nucleus and correct. in the particular correct. orbits etc but on quantum level the scenario is totally different yes yes yes, yes. so correct. that theory can we correlate with that planetary model ha huh. oh that is that will be fantastic that, that's my dream problem <laughs> See, I, i am amazed that how how bringing that uh, angular momentum is n times h by 2 pi allows me to use uh, q1 q2 by 4 pi epsilon not a square equal to mv square by r all these classical equations where a particle is moving in a force field and then the x mass force is mass times acceleration or do all those newton's laws we are using for the electron okay. and just one addition of uh, l is equal to n times h by 2 pi 
gives me the same energy expression which uh, you get when you solve the entire schrodinger equation with uh, such a laguerre polynomial and this and that you get the same expression so it's okay. really amazing and uh, i do not know i i will be very happy if someone can uh, bring out the inner correlation and but the, the different from this, uh, this uh, it's a very good uh, how that things how the science develops right so at a certain stage we have hydrogen spectra the data were not understandable bohr's come out with a theory which is that planetary model right. where the the coulomb attractive coulomb force is the central force which allows the particle to move in circular orbits or elliptical orbits, just like planets move in the gravitational field of the same nature, one by r square. Right. And then uh, he, he finds that, okay, if I add to the theory, add to the existing theory, a new clause, right? Constitute constitution amendment. <laughs> <laughs> in the constitution we make one amendment that angular momentum is quantized right, right, right. then this theory becomes uh, competent to explain those observed wavelengths very successfully okay fine that theory is very good so the theory is uh, applicable Newton's theory is not wrong classical theory is not wrong we can uh, design uh, many of the experiments, many of the gadgets, many of the products based on, on this. You know, when a motor car is designed or a motorcycle is designed, they do not solve Schrodinger equations. Right. They solve only Newton's laws. So I cannot say that Newton's laws are wrong. Okay. <laughs> but then there are domains. Uh, if mm -hmm. I am in this domain, Newton's laws are very good, mm, very correct. We use them. But then uh, if you go in some other domain, all that nano size or uh, angstrom size or femtometer size, that's a different domain. Right. <laughs> then, uh, okay, these, these things do not work. This planetary model does not work. The experimental data, data in that regime, they are not explainable by this. Then we go for another theory. So that is how okay. things uh, develop. And then we come to that quantum theories and then field quantization, all those things. So that is how science develops. It's a very interesting development of science. Correct. 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 Thank you, sir. Deepika, madam, please continue. Yes. So uh, one more question, if I can take, is it possible, okay. sir? Yeah, yeah, OK. It's not yes, yet, thank you so much, not sir. Not yet 4.30. Four, four okay, so yes, can I ask my question? Sir. Hello, sir. Yes, yes, go on. So I would like to ask why does it take so long for the Nobel Committee to recognize someone's work and award him the Nobel Prize? <laughs> yeah, in fact, uh, the deliberations which go on there are supposed to be kept very, very secret. But then after a certain time, 50 years or something after which this, those deliberations can be made public. So if you search for the documents, uh, at least at least the older Nobel Prizes, uh, for example, Einstein, why the Einstein could not get a Nobel Prize earlier is very interesting to read. <laughs> it's very interesting to read and see what, what dynamics goes there. Of course, uh, it all changes uh, with time. So one thing is that... Uh, Nobel Prize work is certainly or something which is very, very astonishing. And therefore, getting convinced that, yes, it is, it is true, it's like this, sometimes take very long time. Of course, the, the committee members uh, have to, and the committee members are also physicists or, or chemists uh, uh, or, or subject experts. But then uh, in, uh, to evaluate a work which is... Uh, which is there, which is nominated for Nobel Prize, to evaluate that is a very difficult uh, game. So many times uh, people take long time to get convinced that yes, it is, it is uh, worth uh, Nobel Prize and nothing wrong in it. So many, many things can, can be there, but this is one of them. 
yes uh thank you so much sir for answering it so patiently thank you so much yes uh moving ahead now i like to present today's vote of thanks today i got the opportunity to put my gratitude into the words on behalf of all the teachers and students present here i would like to extend my you know heartiest thanks to our honorable chief guest padmashri professor hc verma sir for enlightening us with the inspiring and this motivating webinar and the detailings you are an exemplary person sir and we have a lot to learn from you thank you yes every phase of today's webinar from the start till this question and answering sir we have you had made us to fall in love one more time with the physics as you do always thank you so much sir to take out time from your busy schedule and grace this occasion we are looking forward for your offline session in the kc <laughs> college in the future sir yeah sure thank you so much sir okay yes whole heartedly i want to thank you our dear principal ma'am and vice chancellor hsnc university dr hemlata bagla ma'am for her great support and motivation for organizing such a webinars i would also like to thank all the degree college vice principals mr samajit padi mrs shalini sena mr justin maria mrs tejasri shanbag and junior college vice principal mr dilip ram rakhiani for always being there i also extend my gratitude to supervisor and senior administrator mrs nehrata gangwani deputy administrator and convener mrs falguni chokshi for all the help and support in coordinating today's program i would also like to thank ms elizabeth ipin co convener of spectrum and yes i also want to thank sonia ma'am for making that beautiful flyer i must not forget to thank our physics department for their collective team work and last but not the least i also want to thank all our technical team neeraj sir and the monish for providing this fantastic technical support yes and thanks to one and all who is present here especially all the student who has participated so energetically for this particular program thank you so much one and all yes now i'll request nilata gangwani ma'am to end the today's session uh, uh i'll just take a minute uh, i hope you will not remember but two years back i had posted a very very small mail to you regarding the duration of sun uh, confusion we had about refraction and scattering and you had answered it so beautifully within two days in form of a youtube taking my permission and putting my name there so sir actually that motivated us uh, that uh, we can do call you for a webinar because you are such a humble person that you will really accept our invitation you are not only a very great physicist i felt but you are a very very great human being and we are very blessed that you are here with us thank you so much sir from all of us thank you okay thank you we can end the session uh, neeraj yeah all right thank you everyone thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thanks a lot sir thank, thank you, you very much sir thank, thank you thank you sir thank you sir thanks a lot thank you sir